Good morning everyone, this is DQ Tattoos back at you with another video. This week we're going to go over some of the supplies that I use for my watercolor paintings. Um, just about on every video somebody asks, hey what kind of paints do you use or what kind of paper are you using? Do you use Sharpies? Uh, what kind of pens do you use? And uh, I try to put in the description of each painting video all the supplies that I used for that particular painting. But uh, today we're going to go a little bit more in depth. I'll show you the paints that I use, the pens that I use, the paper, and try to try to hit on a little bit of everything that is involved. Now let me just make myself clear: I am not sponsored by any of the companies uh, that make any of these supplies. I either paid for them all myself, or I did luck out uh, on a couple of these items and actually won them in a in a contest, which was completely random. I was very lucky to have won them, uh, and. I love the supplies that I, that I won. Um, I would say that for the most part, even if I hadn't won these, if I had to go back out and buy them today, I would gladly pay the money for them. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. First we're going to talk about paints. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the kind of paint I use. Now I like to use a liquid watercolor ink, and in particular I like to use this Dr. P.H. Martin's. Hydrous watercolors. Let's focus on that. There we go. Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrous Fine Art Watercolor. This is a blue aqua. Permanent. This is a pigment green, blue. Gives a description of how these are made. This is a one ounce bottle. And, uh, this bottle is almost full. I've got, I believe, every Hydrus watercolor that they make, and these will last for a long time. I use them almost exclusively. Um, every now and then I might use like a watercolor pencil if I want to mess around with something different but uh, almost always I use this and the reason why I like these is because they are they are concentrated watercolor ink so these will allow you to get super bright colors when you want to and they can also be mixed with water to give you very smooth fades and uh, transparent colors they are great for layering and they will last you a long time like uh, this one you can see it's kind of low. It's probably about half full right now, and it's one of my favorites, uh, Gamboge. I use this on on most of my paintings, but I have had, you know, even with that being halfway used, I've had these paints for about four years, I believe, and I've not run out of any of them yet. Um, if you want to buy them, they are typically around like nine or ten dollars each bottle if you buy them separately. If you buy them by the set, they come in sets of 12. You can get the one ounce sets on Amazon right now I think for about $65 for each set of 12 and there are three sets of 12 so there are 36 total. Or you can get, I think they make a half or a half, or, a half size um, bottle that's smaller that uh, looks like a set of 12 of those is around 40 to 50 dollars just depending on where you get it from um, so probably better off better value for your money to go ahead and get the full one ounce uh, set especially if you know that you're going to be using these a lot now I do have a couple of other uh, inks they are still Dr. PH Martins but they're not included in those sets and these are a lot of fun if you want to do some uh, calligraphy work these are some iridescent calligraphy colors. This one is copper and it actually has some metallic uh, flake in it. Let's see, I got this one. You can see right there from Hobby Lobby for $7.99 a bottle, you know, and this will last a long time. So that's nice to have. Another one that I got separate is this Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star Waterproof India ink. Now this is great if you're going to be doing a lot of areas of heavy black and you don't really want them to thin out when you're doing the rest of your painting. You put that 
permanent black on, let it dry, and then it will stay solid black while you paint over top of it. So that's that's pretty good to have, but honestly, I really don't use it all that much. Uh, the the typical, the normal sets actually come with a black. This is the ivory black, no, carbon black. And uh, I use this for most anything. It works great. Yeah, it does tend to um, thin out a little bit if you're painting over top of it a lot, but I like it for my solid blacks to transition to a smooth fade, especially if I'm doing a, another color over top of it. It works great. So again, highly recommend the Dr. P.H. Martins, but um, that's what I use. I'm not saying you have to go out there and spend however much money on these. I actually lucked out and won all three sets um, in a contest. So I only had to pay for the two, the two extra bottles there. Um, but from my experience of using them, if I, if I lost these today and needed to get new watercolors, I would in a heartbeat go and get every single one of these back or order them on Amazon or something like that because they are phenomenal. All right, now another thing I'm sure you've seen me use a lot is the yellow tape that I use in my videos um, to tape down the paper. Now this comes in a yellow variety. This is frog tape. Yellow variety is for delicate surface. They make a green for a multi-surface. And uh, what's great about these is they block the paint extremely well. Now you do have to make sure that that it is adhered to your paper very well. I like to usually go around the edges, smooth them out with my fingernail, and um, you know just make sure that they're really, really set on there. Because if it's not perfectly down, then it won't give you such a solid, clean line. And especially anywhere that they overlap, I usually make sure to go along the edge of where they would overlap with my fingernail and just press it down to make sure that none of that watercolor is going to get through because this is this is meant more for uh, wall you know paint that you would use for walls acrylic or vinyl paint um, stuff like that so it's a lot thicker and it's not going to get under the tape quite as easy so it's, you just got to put in a little bit extra effort for the watercolor but it is worth it you know one of the I've tried um, tried regular masking tape I've tried the blue painters tape uh, I don't really care for those because they tend to rip the paper off with the tape when you go to take it off and that just doesn't look all that great to me. So invest in some of the some of the good frog tape if you like. Um, I've also tried the the actual gum tape. Um, I have a huge roll of it somewhere and uh, I've only used it a couple times. From my experience, it doesn't work all that great. I see a lot of people will actually use like staples with it and all that. So it's kind of a pain and it doesn't work all that great for me. So again, frog tape is where it's at for me. All right, so I've got all those paints and I need something to put them in. So I uh, take my paints with me a lot to work and back home and it's kind of a pain to, to carry all those little bottles. Uh, individually, don't want to stick them in my backpack or anything because they're all glass and I don't want them rolling around and breaking on anything. So I just invested in a cheap little um, like toolbox, tackle box. Um, I just got this neat little compartment up top. I don't really have much of anything in here. Um, I think that what is that? Some hot glue? No. Oh yeah, these went to some brushes. I had so I don't really keep much in the top. Got some of these little hooks, but uh, you could keep brushes in there, you could keep little accessories, drawing accessories if you wanted to. That would work just fine. But you can see, I've got all my paints in here. This is plenty big enough to hold all of my Dr. Martin's watercolors. Um, another thing that I didn't mention before. And I don't know if any of you have any experience with this uh, masking fluid here, but um, you know I'm not a big fan of it. I don't really use it all that much. For me, it tends not to remove all that easily from the paper, and also tends to pull the paper with it. 
So I have it, it's okay. I might fool around with it, with it some more later and give you a better review if I find any tips and tricks on it. But um, it can also fit both rolls of my tape in here and then of course all the rest of my paints fit great. So that's what I use to store everything. So it's easy to take with me when I want to do some painting at work or bring back home. It's all in one place and ready to go. So there is that. All right, next we'll talk about paper that you're going to use now. Um, I use a couple different brands. For, for most of my watercolors, I actually use Canton. Um, it's a cheap paper that will hold up well. Uh, you can see actually uh, my next sheet I'm working on, it's going to be a beer kind of themed sheet um, with maybe some aliens and stuff involved. This paper is great because it is a heavier weight. I think this is a, let me check, 140 pound. 140 pound, I would not use anything less than that. That's pretty standard. Um, you can get some that's thicker, but any quality paper is usually 130 pound. That's going to, 140 pounds, sorry, that's going to let you um, do quite a bit of work on it without the paper falling apart. And like I said, this is, uh, Canton, I get this from Walmart. It's pretty cheap for the amount that you get, 30 sheets in one. I want to say this is less than 10 bucks, um, probably cheaper than that. Then you've got the Arches watercolor paper. This is really, really good quality. Uh, paper. This again is uh, 140 pounds. It's, this is a uh, cold press. Yeah, cold pressed. So the cold press is going to have the the nice rough texture to it. So this is going to give you some good texture when you do your when your watercolor paintings. They also make a hot press that you can use um, that is smooth. I use that for uh, marker drawing videos. I like it because the uh, the thicker, more textured paper, if you use a like a Copic marker on it, it is going to eat at the tips of those markers and you're going to end up having to replace them before long. So the smoother paper definitely helps make the, the tips of those last longer. This is 11 by 15 inches. I will usually cut an inch off the end to make it 11 by 14 because that's your standard size for a tattoo flash and it also fits really well in these frames that I get. Um, these, I believe I got these from Dollar General. They're 11 by 14, they come with a matting. As you can see, I only paid three bucks a piece. Um, you can actually get these, I think, for three cents cheaper at Walmart. But uh, I did not know that, so I went and stocked up on like 20 of these frames <laughs> from Dollar General. I pretty much took all the frames like this that any of the Dollar Generals in my area had and uh, stockpiled them. So I've got plenty of those for paintings. Uh, these work great. They're, they're kind of cheap, but uh, you know, when you're doing a painting a week and you want to hang them up in your shop, you know, cheap is not bad. You definitely don't want to be spending ten, twenty dollars on each frame if you're going to try to do you know, 20, 50 of these a year. So that's what I use as far as the paper goes. There's also a smaller paper I use. I want to say it's Canton, but uh, I'm not sure. I will post that in the description. It's one that I've used before. So um, if you're ever wondering on what particular materials I'm using for a specific video, I do always post those in the description as well, but I'm just doing this video to kind of give you an overview of what I like to use. So that is the paper, got the Canson XL and the Arches cold press. That's a 9 by 12 inches. Both very good paper. All right. Let's go on to brushes. All right. So I keep my brushes in this little case here and that just helps me to keep them from getting damaged. Uh, my cats tend to like to chew on paint brushes every now and then and keeps them all in one place so they're ready to go. I've got various different sizes. I've got flats, filberts, um, I've got smaller brushes here. I've got some lining and detail brushes. Um, for the most part, I use these red brushes here, which are, I believe, yeah, Windsor and Newton. Yeah, there we go. Windsor and Newton University Series 223, and this is the number four 
brush and you can see it's stained. I use this one an awful lot. I use it and generally I use a smaller brush alongside of it. That one probably needs to be replaced. I think I actually do have a newer one over here. Um, let's see, these bigger ones are, I believe, Master's Touch. Yeah, these are Master's Touch. They are, it's like a Hobby Lobby brand. Uh, these are great for doing large scale pieces and for doing the stains that I put on before I usually start my painting. So, I mean, good brushes. Now, these are all geared specifically towards watercolor for the most part. I try to look for watercolor specific brushes and um, I'm not sure really what that means as far as what kind of hair is used on the brushes or anything like that. I'm sure you can hear that. That's my cat Dimitri. He's uh, kind of irritated with one of the other cats <laughs> right now. Yep and uh, you know these these work great for watercolor. You can use them for acrylic or for oil painting as well. Mimi, come on, calm down. But yeah, that's basically the brushes I use. Like I was saying, you can use these brushes for acrylics, you can use them for oils, but uh, I just use them for watercolor. If you do use your brushes for another medium, it is best to not use them for anything else. So stick to one medium with those brushes. If you want to do oil painting, then get some different brushes and use those instead. Because trying to use a brush that you use for oils back with watercolor, it's going to be kind of hard to use. So those are my brushes. You know, they don't have to be super expensive brushes. Just make sure that you keep good care, take good care of them, and um, they'll last you a while. Also, you know, of course, you're going to need some rulers. Um, I tend not to use these plastic ones quite so much because even though it says shatter resistant on here, uh, they definitely will break so easily. So, um, got me one of these nice aluminum rulers. Um, and I like this one too because it's going to be a bit longer than my paper that I use. So, I can mark the size off if I want to cut a smaller sheet and not have to use, like, line it more than once. Um, Let's see, here's some other things. I've got a little jar here. I probably need to throw this one away, but this is some wash that I made. Uh, it's been there for a while, you know, and keep some extra little cups nearby for rinse cups. Stuff like that works great. Let's take a look at this. I bet it's kind of nasty. Uh, yeah, it's kind of dark. Probably need to make a new one or lighten that one up or something. But uh, I like to prepare some wash in bulk because then I can do a bunch of sheets at once if I want to or uh, you know just have it for when I need it. Alright got this and by the way I'm not sponsored by anything that I'm showing you here I've either paid for it or I won like that paint in a contest got very lucky with that but um, I actually won this from sharing liking another youtubers video this is from Rigor Art and uh, this is probably my favorite palette actually that I've used so far. I use this one more than any other palette I have because of all the wells that this one has. I want to say this one has 23, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we got 24, 28. Um, and then you've got the bigger ones. So. It works really great. Um, the only thing I didn't really care for too much about this particular pal palette when I got it is you have to kind of rough it up a little bit, otherwise um, it beads up any kind of water real easy. It doesn't lay out all that smooth, and they do they do actually suggest that you take like a sponge to it or something just to just to rough it up a little bit, and that way they won't beat up you know so bad. But this one's great, you know, it's got the little holder there so you can hold it in one hand and little places for your brushes. Honestly, I never use any of that. So for if it were me, I would like to have one extra well here without the holes and stuff that I could use rather than having this because, I mean, it's nice if you're standing up, I guess, and doing a painting like that. I'm always sitting down at this desk, so I don't really need that. But this one works great for me. I also have a few that are similar to that uh, that I got at Hobby Lobby that are still, you know, great. Um, I just haven't used them in a while because that, that one works really well for me. 
Um, yeah, so that's my palette. Brushes definitely have some good quality rulers. Um, got a few other things to show you. Alrighty, so I got one of these cases. You don't have to have a case like this. You can go order like a, a little tackle box um, case. This is basically what this is. Like this is kind of geared more towards tattoo artists. Um, I ordered one of the tattoo travel bags a few years back and it actually came with two of these. Um, don't use the bag anymore, but I still use these. They're great. You can take out these little dividers. It comes with a ton of them. But uh, these are my basic drawing supplies that I take with me all the time. As far as what I use more in particular for my watercolors, um, I use these Copic Multiliners and these Pigma Microns. Both work great and are permanent, so you can paint over top of them. So that's good to have. Um, you definitely want to test and make sure before you use any new pens that you haven't used that you get like a scrap piece of paper and make some marks with the pens that you've got and let it dry then, then paint over it with some water or some watercolor paint just to make sure that it truly is permanent because I really like these Papermate uh, flare pens but they are most certainly not waterproof. Okay, they work great for drawing uh, outlines and stuff like that, but they will not hold up to watercolor. Also, I have got a ton of Sharpies. Sorry about that, got a phone call. It was a telemarketer. Love those. All right, so yeah, got tons of Sharpies in here and you can never really have too many sharpies because you know of course the tips are going to get flat over time and not give you the lines that you want unless you want really thick lines um, so what I'll do is I'll either buy a bunch of extra packs or I've even taken like an exacto knife and actually sharpened the tip on them and that will that will hold up for a little bit so that works pretty good um, when I'm doing my drawings getting ready for uh, designed for watercolor. I like to use these red pencils here. Um, any kind of red pencil works just fine for me. I don't go for any particular kind. I have noticed that you can't really find these at Walmart anymore, at least not at any of the Walmarts that I go to. Um, I've also got, let's see, I think the only ones I have are pretty small, but this is a double-ended pencil. Uh, as you can see, I've only got the blue left on that one. but they actually come half red, half blue. Um, and I've already, I think I've already used all the red on any of those that I've had. Now those, oh, here we go, I found one. So that is what they look like before you use all the red side. And these are nice because you can do the basic first sketch with red, then you can do your refinement with the blue side, and they're pretty cool. And then you just use a light box to trace it onto your watercolor paper. Um, let's see what else I got in here. I have some of these Molotow paint pens. Um, these work great for highlights when you're done with your painting. Uh, that's a pretty thick one. But I have some smaller ones that I've used. Um, also, I've got some of these, the, the Jelly Roll. I'm sure you've seen these on other videos before. They are pretty popular for doing your highlights. Got a bunch of those. Um, they work okay. They just don't, they're not quite as opaque as I would prefer them to be. So they do, they do a decent job. You know, of course you need some good erasers. Honestly, I don't really use this big putty eraser. Yeah, you can tell I've got some shavings for my pencil sharpener on it. Um, don't use this one all this much. It's more or less a, a stress ball <laughs> for me these days. But I do, I do really like to use these plastic erasers. Probably use these more than anything else. Uh, they're going to work great to get any marks off your watercolor paper if you do some sketching directly on that beforehand. Let's see, everything else is pretty much just random pens and stuff. Uh, one of my cats <laughs> got a hold of one of the things I just dropped on the floor. She's having a ball with that. But those are my supplies. Uh, as you can see, I like to have a lot of options. 
when I'm doing my drawings and my paintings. And oh, I've got another pen over here. This is a uh, just a painter's pen. Let me zoom on that. There we go. Painters um, pen. Get these at Walmart. I've also used the Elmer's paint pens. They work just as well. That's a finer tip one. That works great for doing highlights too. Almost forgot to mention these. Um, I use these for almost every painting video that I do. I like these rather than taping it directly to my desk because if I need to move it, I mean, I can just take this with me. I don't typically use the little clipboard part here, although it can be useful for keeping sketches and stuff like that on it. But, uh, you know, if I'm doing a smaller watercolor, I will just tape my paper directly to this board. Uh, if I'm doing a bigger one, of course, I have this huge board here. It's a De La Rooney board. Um, got both of these from Hobby Lobby. I honestly can't remember at this point how much they cost. Uh, they weren't too bad, but uh, as you can see, I've used these a lot and will use them a lot more. They are definitely worth the money. And you know, um, you don't have to have two. I think I started off with the smaller one and upgraded to the bigger one when I wanted to do the full size flash sheets. But I'm pretty sure, and I will check it here, that yeah, I mean, even with the full size flash sheets, you can still tape them to one of the smaller boards. I think I got some really big sheets um, that I used the, the bigger one for, probably like when I did the. Uh, the full back piece of that Hanya skull in one of my older videos but you know especially if you go to some place like Hobby Lobby or I know Joann's I think they do it as well um, you can get their apps if you've got an iPhone possibly Android and they will usually have a coupon that you can use um, for like 30 40 percent off one item uh, that's not on sale. Now Hobby Lobby, they do sales like every other week they will switch what's on sale and they usually do like 50% off stuff so I'll check on that but if that's not the case I will grab one item and I will use my coupon and the great thing about those coupons is you can use either one per visit or one per day. Um, I'm not sure like if you could just go back the same day and get something else I guess it would depend on the Hobby Lobby you go to, but uh, yeah, once a day, I would say is safe. And it's constant, they always have those coupons up. They they will have an expiration date on them, but I mean, it's they give you a new one every week and it lasts the whole week and then they give you another one. I, I believe it's a week. So definitely get that app if you're gonna go to Hobby Lobby and get some supplies, because that will save you a lot of money. I know when I was getting my Copic markers, I would uh, I would go like once a week or once a, a day <laughs> in some busier weeks that I've had, when I've had the extra money, and the, the markers themselves are like seven bucks a piece uh, when you get them there. So using that 40% off each time on each marker, yeah, that's gonna save you a lot of money. So. That's a great thing to have. These will, will help you a lot, not just with your watercolor paintings, but you can put other regular, like I do marker drawings on these. Anything that you want to mask off, it's great to have a nice surface like this that you can tape it to and you can take it with you. You know, I take this these in between the shop and home a lot, so that, that helps me a ton. Definitely invest in some of those. They are great. So I guess that about wraps it up as far as the supplies that I use. If you have any questions, um, if you want me to discuss anything else a little bit more in depth than I did while showing you the items, I'd be more than happy to. Again, always make sure that you're using uh, watercolor paper with a decent weight to it. Uh, the cold press and hot press is, is a difference in uh, texture. So if you're wondering that, the cold press is the one that has a, a pretty rough texture. Now you can actually get rough uh, in specific rough is, is the word they use um, paper rather than just cold pressed and you can get a smoother watercolor paper too. Um, they're going to talk what that's talking about is the the tooth of the paper or the amount of texture that is on it and then the hot press obviously that is flat smooth best used for marker drawings. Um, you can't do watercolor on it too though it worked just fine but Make sure you get you know some decent paper. Try some different things. Find what you like. You know you may not like the the Canon 
cold press paper you may not like the arches um, paper maybe maybe the arches is too expensive and you just want to go with something cheaper or you're just getting into it you don't have to go with the the expensive paint uh, you can use the cheaper stuff you know the the most important thing is to just get out there and start painting get some supplies get what you can afford and just start doing it because you'll get better and then when you get the time and the money to spend on the more uh, elaborate supplies then then go for it get them uh, if it's something that you're going to be spending a lot of time on then it's definitely worth it i think i'm about ready to get a headbutt from my cat jeffers no no he's just gonna lay in my lap and chew on my fingers while i'm recording this um yeah sharpies again sharpies were great microns pigment microns were good copic markers are nice there we go he gave me a headbutt um Maybe he's about to be stuck on my microphone. <laughs> uh, like I said, though, if you have any questions about any other materials um, you'd like to ask me about, I will answer your questions as best I can. And um, if you want to see anything different in another video, please so let me know. So if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you know of any friends that could use some of the information in this video, please do share it with them. Also, don't forget to subscribe for the weekly video that I post every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If there's anything uh, new that you'd like to see on there, any questions that you have, please do leave me a comment down below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram name is at DQTattoos. And uh, I guess that's it for this week. We will see you next week. Hope you have a good one. And um, see you then. Bye.